Hi, Christina Brown here with the Brown team at eXp Realty. Today's topic is on finances and ways to save money. Whether you own a home, you don't own a home, you're renting, you're young, you're old, all of these tips I feel are very helpful. We all always need to save more money. So I did some research, came up with I feel some really great tips. I have eight ways to save money. The first thing is super important and it is track your expenses. That is so huge. So many of us do not do that like we should. You'll find you'll eat out more, you'll waste money on Starbucks every day. There's just a lot of ways that you can cut corners if you simply track your expenses and just know what you are spending your money on. So what you track gets improved, right? If you measure it, you know what to improve and how to fix it. The second thing goes along with that, and that is creating a budget. Now, creating a budget is half the battle, but sticking to it is the other. So you also have to actually stick to the budget that you create, or a budget does you, of course, absolutely no good. So a budget helps you know how much money you have to work with, and then what things do you need versus what you want, and how can you make it all work? If you don't have enough money just on your budget to make it, especially for your necessities, then you definitely have a problem and you need to reevaluate. So you wanna know you don't just wanna spend money and frivolously pay for this or that and not realize what you have. Super important. They also say you should live on 80% of your income. So I feel like that goes with budgeting too. So if you plan that way, and a way to help you with your budget is tip three, find ways to cut your spending or cut your expenses. There are some expenses we just can't live without, right? Mortgage, insurance, cars, you know, there are just certain things that do not go away. However, on your home, you can refinance if, the, if you can get a better interest rate. You can look at those recurring charges on your account, which means you should be looking at your bank statement or your bank records often. So that way you can see what's coming out of your account. So many times we set things on just reoccurring and they automatically come out and we just forget about it. So if you have some things that are being paid that way and maybe it's a subscription to something and you don't even use it, look at it, go there, whatever it may be, it's underutilized, get rid of it, cut it. It's better to just pay for that service or whatever it is at the time you go if it's underutilized by you. Things like insurance. Insurance doesn't go away, but you can shop and you should shop around at your insurance. You don't have to stay with the same company for 20, 30 years because I guarantee you they're not loyal to you. We had an insurance company for over 20 years. We had to make a claim and they canceled us over one claim. You have to do what's in your best interest. I think other things to shop around on is like your cable or your internet. And what about sharing memberships with other people or cutting that landline? You're paying money for a landline who has a landline anymore, right? If you don't have little kids at home, cut that landline, you don't need it. I guarantee you, you can use your cell phone. And then a big thing is eating out. Do not eat out, or at least cut the amount of time you eat out. You do not need to eat out every day for lunch and dinner. That is a big way. And then another thing is, if you don't have the money in the account, don't buy it. Don't use your credit card. Those are things that so many people get stuck in that trap of doing. I think the next thing, which I'm calling this tip for, is plan ahead for those bigger expenses. Like, you know you have to register your car. You know you have to re-register it every year or two years, three, it depends on how many years out you go when you register it. You have personal property taxes at the end of the year. That's coming up for us here in Missouri. Uh, vacations, Christmas spending. If you know you're gonna need to buy a car, you know you're going to need to put a roof on your house. Just things like that that you can save for that needs to be planned ahead, which goes back to your budget, right? So if you know these things, you should have money planned towards going into a savings account. Tip number five is meet with a financial planner to plan ahead for those even bigger things and events and life happenings that are going to happen eventually to most people if you don't plan ahead, you will not be in a good situation. Things like retirement, college planning, what about marriage, you know, getting the wedding plans to help your kids, what about death? All those things take a lot of planning, so plan ahead. And then tip number six is use those bonuses, tax refunds, those bits of money you get throughout the year, use that wisely. Those can really help set you ahead on your savings plan. We like to tell people when you get your tax refund, that is 
great way to help you with that down payment for your first home. To go along with that is don't rent. Buy a home, you're gonna get equity. If you're renting, you're paying off somebody else's mortgage. They get to enjoy all of that equity that you're paying for. So buy a house as soon as you possibly can. And a way to do that, like I said, is use these bonuses, tax refund money towards that. And then of course, tip number seven, pay your bills on time. If you pay your bills on time, you're gonna have a better credit score. You're gonna be able to get better interest rates on car loans, home loans, insurance rates. There's so much that goes into having better credit. Plus, if you get behind on payments, it is so hard, if not impossible, to catch up for people. So just don't get caught in that trap. Pay those bills on time. Again, that goes to that budget and that planning. And then my last tip, tip number eight, is if you own a home, pay an extra payment every single year. If you get paid every two weeks, you can actually set it up where you take out half a mortgage payment every two weeks. That ends up being 26 half payments or 13 whole payments for your mortgage in a year, which equals one extra payment a year. You don't even feel it or notice it. And they say you can save off seven years off the life of your loan, not to mention how much interest you are saving. You would be saving a boatload of interest by just doing that simple tip alone. So, hope these tips help you. Please, if you have questions, reach out. If you need any resources, I would love to help. Have a great day.